Hi folks, if you're going to shoot in the coastal rainforest, or really anywhere where weather can be a significant factor, you need a cover for your camera gear that will allow you to continue using it to comfortably shoot, even when it's pouring down. Some of my favorite images have been taken after sitting for hours in the driving rain. And so I'd like to show you the cover I use that allows me the opportunity to get these kinds of shots. First, let me show you some of the things I've used in the past that haven't worked well. On your travels, on your photo trip out to the coast, if you stay in a hotel, grab those free shower caps and stick them in your camera bag. Even though they're incredibly flimsy and will blow off with the slightest gust of wind, they can be used just to quickly put a cover on your camera and lens while you dig around for more robust rain gear. I've also tried going super simple and just using this plastic wrap that's used for packaging sandwiches. Essentially, this gives you a thick plastic tube that you can secure with rubber bands. I found, however, that rain tends to creep inside and now you've got a thick plastic cover keeping the moisture sandwiched firmly onto your camera gear. Here's one of the more expensive options that is reasonably durable. This is a nylon coat with a waterproof breathable laminate similar to Gore-Tex inside. They work well, but as I mentioned, you'll pay hundreds of dollars for these and you need a different one for most of your different lenses. One downside I found is that they're not super waterproof, especially around the stitching. Also, your camera or lens can kind of rub away the, the laminate fairly quickly. In addition, the vinyl windows that are there so you can see your, win your settings and images tend to crack and so I end up having to put so much duct tape that it's essentially useless. I end up shooting with the cover mostly rolled off the camera, which kind of defeats the purpose. So in the end, I've finally settled on using dry bags, which are used to keep your gear dry while doing water sports. When they're closed properly, they're completely waterproof. I found that my dry bags, when using them for kayaking, will get small holes in the bottom from being put down on the ground and on rocks. This renders them useless for carrying important gear in, say, a wet kayak, but cutting the bottom out of the bag and placing a gasket on there that can go on the hood of your camera lens transforms it into an incredibly robust and durable rain cover. Let me show you my basic design. So this is my design in very basic form. You can see in black is the lens with the lens hood attached. The yellow is the body of the dry bag with obviously a hole cut out of the bottom. And then in red are the two neoprene cuffs that I attached to the end of the dry bag. Neoprene is the rubber that wetsuits are made out of and is incredibly stretchy and durable. As you can see, I put an inner cuff that goes on the lens hood and then also an outer cuff that is useful to fully seal the front end of the lens. I also use a neoprene lens cap here in blue that goes over the inner cuff and then the outer cuff goes over the lens cap and that gives me a very watertight seal. I can carry my rig on the deck of my kayak where it can get splashed with salt water and rained on for hours. I know that everything's going to stay snug inside and then when I want to use the camera I simply roll back the outer cuff, remove the lens cap, open the seal at the back of the dry bag to reveal my camera and shoot away. My camera remains snug and dry inside its cover sealed at the end by this neoprene and I can shoot for hours. Here's one I've done for a long lens. You can see the two gaskets, the outer one here and then the inner one. You can also see that the stiffener is useful in the once you've unrolled the top of the bag to use the camera, it forms a nice tent that continues to shed the rain and is stiff enough so that the bag isn't sort of falling in the way of the camera when you're looking at the back of the camera or using the controls. So that's a basic design and rationale. Now, let's make one for the 70 to 200 lens. Here are the things you'll need. Obviously, you'll need a dry bag. 
I go for a medium weight that's big enough to hold the lens and ideally is able to roll closed. You'll need some sort of glue, contact cement, tent seam sealer, uh, aqua seal. You'll need your lens hood and some saran wrap to protect it during gluing. And also popsicle sticks are helpful to spread the glue. You'll need some neoprene. Now, neoprene you can buy as rolls of one millimeter uh, neoprene. Um, you can buy neoprene lens pouches and those are handy because you can cut them off, use the gasket, and then use the other end as your lens cap. Finally, I've also played with using, uh, you can buy spare lens or spare gaskets for dry suits. And so you simply trim the narrow end to fit your lens hood. Not bad, about $35. Okay, here we go. Step one. So the first thing is um, wrap your lens hood in saran wrap. Um, painter's tape and just plain old saran wrap. This way your lens hood is protected um, as we use ink and glue. Next, we need to figure out where to cut the bottom of the bag. Obviously you need a hole big enough that your lens hood can slide inside, but you still want it pretty snug. So what I do is um, kind of get the dry bag full of air, roll it closed like that, do up the seal, there. Now I can work with the bottom nice and flat. What I'm going to do is put my lens hood on there and then use, uh, I find, well, obviously for a black lens or a bag bottom, a silver tip marker is helpful. And I'm just going to make sure I've got it even and roughly. mark where I'm going to cut, like so. So that gives me an idea. And now what I'll do is take some scissors. I'm going to start right in the middle. Now, of course, if this is your kid's favorite dry bag, you know, let your wife know you've done this after you make the cuts. I start in the middle, make a nick. Now what we're going to do is use the flaps from the bottom to glue them to the gasket. So I come out radially like so. And then going from the center out like so. I like to make about eight flaps, so sort of quarters and then eighths, like that. And you go all the way around until you're happy that the hole is big enough to slide over the lens and that the flaps you can glue onto your gasket. Okay, so I've done all my cuts now and you can see I've got sort of triangle shaped flaps um, ready to go. And it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, just approximate. That's basically the self-talk I use for most of my DIY projects. Anyway, so here's the lens cap and let's just make sure that it fits through. So again, you want a snug fit, um, but obviously you need to be able to slide your lens cap through when you put your, your uh, bag on. So here, let's just slide it out. So now you can see uh, more easily. The triangles that I've cut out that will will glue to the gasket, the lens hood slides through nicely. We're getting there. On to step two. Okay, step two, gaskets. So sizing them, what I do is I, I don't want the gasket, at least the inner gasket, to come beyond the leaf 
pedals if it's a if it's a pedaled hood. Solid hoods are usually the first gasket go about halfway because what I want to do is leave room for the outer gasket then to seal over without coming over past the lens and possibly getting in your shot. So what I do is I just measure my neoprene and I want a fairly snug fit but not tight. It'd just be a pain to get on and off if it's too tight. Cut and then what I do I use my glue. Now this glue I use, um, I'm not paid by them or anything like this, no affiliate link, but I found this is incredibly tough. Even on one millimeter uh, neoprene, I'll glue that, those two ends together like that. And now you've got a, a band and then take it to your local friendly neighbor who I'm very, very fortunate. I have a wonderful neighbor whose daughter then stitched the two uh, ends across as well. And then I'm gonna bring it up to the camera really closely. So you can see the stitching in there. Um, and then what I did is I put another layer of glue on the outside and inside to waterproof that seam. So now you've got a waterproof gasket. And obviously uh, you need two gaskets, one inner and one outer. Okay. Now comes the sticky part. Ready to make an unholy mess. So I've got my um, contact cement. So the idea is you put some of the glue on one surface and the other surface, you give it a few minutes to dry a bit, and then you uh, squeeze them together. So here's the lens hood. And then I've got my gasket on there and you can see it's not past, I'll bring it up to the camera there, not past the pedals. And um, an easy way to dry fit it is just to stick it in the other end of the bag so that all the little triangles that we made open like that, like a flower. So then you can sort of gauge where on the bag you want it. This join right here um, at the base of the triangles is the key part. If you don't glue that down, water's gonna get in. It's easy to glue these flaps to your gasket and then just trim them off. But you need some glue in behind that, the apex of your cut there. So I slide that uh, just so it's sort of, there's the, you can see with this finger here, the edge of the bag, and which is the, the edge of the lens hood. And I slide it just on, you know, a centimeter or so, so that I'll have some glue back there. And that way I can seal that down. Okay, so that's my plan. So I, I need then, you know, if I need about that much left, you can see there then that I'm gonna have to put a rim of glue around here and then some on the inside of the bag. And then uh, also, after I've done all that, then I'll start doing some of the flaps. And you can even do the flaps at a later time. Um, there's no rush, but this initial glue will be just to get the whole thing seated uh, at the base of that cut and on the gasket itself. So let's get on with it. I'm gonna leave the gasket on the lens hood and just glue it right there. And this is why the lens hood's in saran wrap. It's just way easier to handle and you can see what you're doing. And it's really simple. So I'll just kind of run it around a nice continuous bead. And again, my favorite saying doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to smear it around with the uh, popsicle stick in a second. And I kind of have in my mind the width of glue that I need. Okay, so you've got some working time. So I'm just going to smear that along, make sure I've got a nice kind of gooey surface for that bag to stick to, like so. Most of these contact cements stink. Um, so, you know, if you've got a well-ventilated area, it's, it's good. Otherwise, you'll be a bit loopy when you come out of glue in like this. I think it might be the toluene. I'd have a fan on, but then you wouldn't be hear, hearing what I'm saying. 
All right, so that's, I've got a pretty good um, smear of cement now around the base of my uh, lens hood. So now, now's the really sticky part on the inside of the bag. And there's, there's no elegant way to do this, um, really. So I just go kind of triangle by triangle, kind of smeared around. It's going to stick to itself and, and all that. That's okay. Just making sure I've got a good smudge of glue at the base or the apex, I guess, of each of the cuts on the inside. And you can see there, there's a rim of seam tape that'll be working to our advantage. And across. I'm just going to work around the whole bag like this. Ooh, my eyes are watering from the fumes here. <clears throat> okay, and you can see now it's a unholy sticky mess. Okay, this is the worst part, by the way. If you can get through this, you're golden. So, we're almost there. This is a $30 dry bag, but your gear is a lot more expensive than that. Wow. Here we go. That's stinky. And now, really carefully this time, I'm going to try and not smear the glue all through the inside of the bag, but again, not a big deal. And here it comes on the other side. You see the glue smearing down the lens hood, and this is why sticking everywhere. Don't care. Okay, so there's my measurement, and now comes the sticky part. And you're just using the flats of a finger just to kind of make sure that it's stuck down really well, you know. I mean, these aren't perfect dimensions. You're crinkling some of the bag. Totally fine. Totally fine. The key is get a good gob of glue at the base of those cuts. And some of the bag attached to your gasket. This one's a bit far out, so I'm going to bring that back a bit. There we go. So now, you know, I'm just kind of smearing it along an inside. I'm hoping I'm creating a nice film that will sit. You can see the pinches. That's okay. I'm squidging them down. You probably can't hear it in the video, but I can hear little air bubbles popping. That's what you want. All right. I think what I'm going to do is maybe swap out my gloves, then with non-sticky fingers do another round and add a bit more glue under the flaps now. Okay, now I've got less sticky gloves on, so what I'm going to do is just peel back the flaps here, put a bit of glue along there. Pay attention to the bases. Let it be in the air for a minute to get good and sticky. And then after a second, actually by the time I get around to the other side, it will probably be ready to press down. Before putting the outer gasket on, I'll just make sure when I go around that all the little, uh, the bases of all those cuts are well adhered to the gasket. Okay, and so now, once it's sort of had a chance to dry for a minute or two, then I'll fold these over, trim the ends, and uh, leave it for 24 hours. And then we'll be ready to go on to the outer gasket. All right, I hope you had fun with that. See you in a bit. So just to review, I glued the inner seal to the inside of the dry bag and glued those triangles that we made when we cut the hole at the bottom of the dry bag onto that seal as well. So it's actually pretty secure. Um, we're going to make it more secure but now attaching the outer gasket that'll go over our lens cap. This is a lot less messy and a much easier process. Here's my gasket. You can see it's too long for the lens hood right now. That'll vignette on our lens. Not a problem. That's easy to trim. But 
just bending it back, it'll end up something like that. And so the lens cap will go in this space between the two gaskets. There's my, uh, the edge of my lens hood. Here's the inner gasket with the dry bag over top. And then this will be glued onto this strip here. Remember our favorite saying, doesn't have to be perfect. So we get our um, favorite glue again. And here we go, another, another messy part. The glue stinks. Most of these contact cement stink. A good ventilated area or even a fan where you're working is a good idea. So we'll give it a few more minutes to dry and then we'll fold it over. So we've waited a couple minutes. Uh, it's still a little bit tacky, which is perfect. So now all we need to do is just fold it onto the gasket. Pretty satisfying. And this little guy will be your friend when it is pouring down outside. Your camera will thank you. This particular glue needs about 24 hours to fully cure. And so don't do it the night before your trip. Hopefully more sun covers than rain covers, but you know, this is the rainforest. Well folks, I'm back and did you catch my mistake in that last video? Uh, it turns out it doesn't have to be perfect and um, this is certainly not that. So what I did in the last video, if you remember, I was showing you how I was gluing around here um, for the outer cuff, but what I forgot to do was protect the inner cuff from the glue. And so what has happened now, if you see, the inner gasket is now cemented securely to the outer gasket. Now, compare that to this other one that I showed you before, where there's the outer gasket and there's the inner gasket and the lens cap can sandwich between them. So in this one now, the lens cap is just gonna have a cover on it. So I'll put it together and I'll show you. I'm not gonna redo it. You know, I screwed it up, but it's still gonna work just fine. Uh, and I think it's more important that for you guys to see that and so that we can discuss what to do when, you know, if you wanna do a wide angle lens with a very, very thin cover, you might not be able actually to make the two gasket system and maybe this other system uh, might be even be more uh, practical and pragmatic. So let me put it together and I'll show you how it looks. All right, I'm back. Well, here it is. Um, lens cap is on, cuff is extended over it, bag is sealed, as is this will withstand rain all day. Um, to use it, I just open up the back and we can see if I shimmy it down a little bit, there's my camera body, a nice little tent to shed the rain, but I can still use it, no problem. I left the cuff long on this and so all I can do now is just roll it back, take off my lens hood, snug that up like so, and there, I can shoot sound as a pound. Um, it doesn't have quite the double gasket feature, but this is a shorter hood and it would have been a bit tenuous anyway. I'd have probably had to trim this and also trim this uh, lens cap a little bit, but given the length of this and the length of the hood together, um, I think that will provide an ample seal uh, against rain for, um, even the worst conditions. So, like I said before, you wanna see this in action, have a look at some of my other videos and you'll see it there, along with the, uh, the other one on the longer lens. If you have any questions, send me a message, happy to answer them, and I'll see you out there shooting. Bye for now.